Here they are, the Quiz Kids, brought to you by the makers of Alka-Seltzer and One-A-Day brand vitamins. Coming to you today from Denver, Colorado. Yes, sir, the Quiz Kids are in Denver at the invitation of the Denver Committee of the American Aid to France. They are here to help the school children of Denver raise money for a health center for their one-world neighbors, the destitute children of the city of Brest, France. They also appeared before 1,500 delegates at the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization Banquet Thursday night. But while working for a good cause, the kids have had an exciting time, too, because it's the first time any of them has ever been in Colorado. And having more fun than any of them is that wild westerner from Crawfordsville, Indiana, our chief quizzer himself, Joe Kelly. Thank you, Bob Murphy, and hello, everyone. Well, the kids and I certainly have had a fine time here in Denver, a trip to see the Garden of the Gods, a hike up Cheyenne Mountain above the clouds, a peak at Pikes Peak, and a visit to the Will Rogers Memorial. You know, we've been here since Wednesday when we launched the national campaign of the American Aid to France. And now, quiz kids, let's climax our visit with a good program right now. First, roll call. Mark? I'm Mark Klein, six years old, and I'm in the first grade laboratory school at the University of Chicago. Pat? I am Patrick Long Conlon. I am 10 years old because I just had a birthday Wednesday. Yeah. And uh, I'm in fifth grade at the Fort Dearborn School. Well, good for you. And uh, Joel? I'm Joel Carpenter. I'm 11 years old today. I'm just saying, what's going to call you on? Another birthday? Well, yes, what do you know about that? Uh, Naomi? I'm Naomi Cook. I, I was I'm, uh, I was nine years old at 12, 15, and I'm in the fourth grade at the Grover Cleveland School of Chicago. What, well, another birthday. My goodness, is that mountain time, Naomi? <laughs> no, it's Chicago time. Oh, Chicago time. <laughs> well, what do you know about that? You, Joel, and Pat. Say, you know, that gives me an idea. I, uh, I won't let you in on it until just before we go off the air. But it's a surprise, and I hope you'll enjoy it. And now, there's one more member of our class today, a fine representative of Denver school children, selected by our quiz kid staff from candidates nominated by every school in Denver, Paul. My name is Paul Hannon. I'm 11 and a half years old, and I'm in 6A at the Park Hill School, Denver, Colorado. Yeah! Well, Paul, we're mighty happy to have you with us. Now then, let's get on to brass tacks. Got a lot of questions here. You know, Denver, among other things, is famous as the Mile High City. Mrs. Josephine E. Gray of Bangor, Maine, wants you children to imagine that right in the center of town, you dug a hole all the way down to sea level and then fell in. Of course, the elevation varies, so let's just imagine that where you dug, the elevation was 5,184 feet. How long would it take you to hit bottom? Go. Well, uh, square root of 51, 84 is 72. So therefore, uh, 72, 4 into 72 is 18, so it'll take you 18 seconds. 18 seconds is absolutely right. Good boy, Joel. That was uh, a quick, that would be a quick fall, and that was quick figuring, if uh, I know what I'm talking about, and I think I do. Well, that question earned a Zenith portable radio for Mrs. Gray of Bangor, Maine. You know, for each question you hear on the show, Alka-Seltzer gives away one of these, uh, one of those dandy transoceanic Zenith portables, the kind that plays on trains, planes, or what have you. And folks, that isn't all. If the quiz kids miss your question, instead of the portable, you get a gorgeous big console model, a Zenith radio phonograph combination worth 250 smackaroos. Yes. Sure, it's a dandy. 
That big job has FM bands, automatic record changer, the whole work. So why don't you send a question to Quiz Kids Chicago and see if you can win one of these fine radios. You know, kids, last week on Mother's Day, we considered what kind of mothers various birds would make, and you children decided to keep your own mothers. <laughs> With the fishing season opening out here May 25th, Philip Hiling of Denver wonders what you'd think of a rainbow trout for a mother. Mark? Well, I'm not sure it's the rainbow trout, but the trout, the mother lays its egg, and the baby is called a fly, and so she comes along near a baby fly, and she can catch it, she'll eat it. Oh, aha, uh -huh, I see. Well, uh, that uh, would be so nice, would it, Mark? No, I not uh, a bit. No. Say, by the way, Mark, uh, tell me, son, how do you feel about fishing? Do you ever feel sorry for the fish? Kind of. Sometimes. Kind of, huh? I see. Well, I just want to know how you uh, felt about that. I uh, knew you kids were anxious to uh, see an Indian when we came out uh, west here, so you're going to see an Indian. Now, we have backstage a real Cherokee Indian warrior in war paint and full regalia. And his name is Mr. Walking Stick. And he's going to help us with uh, this next deep, big question. Folks, I want you to meet Mr. Walking Stick. The old Taja. I do offer you leave. It's just Managa. Sagwa, Dolly, Zonky, Nerky, Hiski. Ugh. <laughs> uh, oh, I see. Uh, you're talking uh, in the Cherokee. Uh, oh, well, uh, Pontiac, uh, Wichita, Omaha, Liberty, <laughs> and hello to you too, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> At the, at the request of Alice Sawyer of San Diego, California, Mr. Walking Stick is going to impersonate some famous Indian warriors of American history. Now, see whether you, uh, quiz papooses can identify them. All right, Mr. Walking Stick. Me fight, white man, little big horn. Crazy horse, him fight too. Me cross border, Canada, come back, get arrested. All right, uh, Naomi. Could that be Sitting Bull? Sitting Bull, that's absolutely right. That's correct. <laughs> now, here's the next one. My brother, Prophet, him say, want all Indians to fight white man. We go Wabash River. My brother say, come on, to Governor Harrison. White man win battle. Joel? Tecumseh. Tecumseh. That's correct, Joel. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mr. Walking Stick. Uh, oh, by the way, is there any question you'd like to ask the children before you leave? Yes, Joel. I'd like to ask them what they think of their ancestors for taking this country away from the Indians. All right, children. Now, there's a little discussional question. Uh, uh, Naomi? Well, I don't think it was right, but... Uh... They should have given the Indians a right to, uh, to have their own land and not take it away from them without paying them. Well, um, let's see, uh, Paris? Well, uh, some of the white men were, uh, were very cruel to the Indians, and, uh, they took the land away by force and without any reason at all except just to get gold and other minerals. But, uh, the Indians, some Indians were also very cruel. But uh, I think it is only fitting and proper that they have re reservations now. Uh-huh. Yes, you got to have reservations these days, yeah. Um, uh, Mark? Well, I don't think it was good because the white man had his own home and he didn't have to take more places, so he could have played the line. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, sir, Mark. Uh, Paul? It wouldn't be 
be on the quiz, kids, if the white man ha- hadn't taken the land from the Indians. It's a discussional <laughs> question, though. <laughs> That's right, Paul. That's right. And Joe? Well, in my mind, the white man's the big bully, and the uh, Indian uh, is the uh, little guy who fights his guns to keep what belongs to him. Uh-huh. Well, uh, Mr. Walking Stick, uh, what, what do you think of those answers? Well, personally, I'm glad the white man did come. The Indians were not exterminated. There are more Indians now than there ever were then. And I, for one, like electricity and a real house better than a campfire and a wigwam. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I should uh, tell you, Quiz, kids, a little more about Mr. Walking Stick. He's the only Indian we could find in Denver. He, uh, he has a bachelor's degree from George Washington University. He's now working on his master's degree in social work at the University of Denver. And you know what? We had to rent his costume, and the reason I call him a warrior is because he's an ex-GI. He's a fine young man. He certainly is. And he's doing a lot for his people in improving their educational facilities. I think we ought to have a big round of applause for the real Mr. Walking Stick. (laughs) And now, children, take a short rest while Star Yellen talks to your parents and teachers. Well, I'm sure that you parents and teachers will agree with the child psychologist that every child needs a strong sense of security to protect his mental health, which is, of course, a big factor in his physical health. And you'll agree, I think, that a child's greatest security comes from parents and teachers who remain steadfastly patient and calm and understanding. Now, in that difficult job of yours, I believe sincerely that every now and then, Alka Seltzer can lend you a helping hand. On those hectic days when everything goes wrong and a headache or an upset stomach comes along, it's naturally harder for you to remain calm and patient with high-spirited children. So take a minute up, relax, and let Alka-Seltzer help you get relief from those annoying complaints that are nagging at your temper. Yes, drink down a glass full of sparkling, refreshing Alka-Seltzer and see how quickly it helps you feel better. You can buy your Alka-Seltzer at any drugstore in either the 30 or 60 cent size. You teachers will find it's a smart idea to buy not one, but two packages. Keep one in your desk at school and the other one at home. An extra package on the side keeps you always well supplied. Thank you, Star. You know, uh, we usually refer to explorers by just their last names, uh, such as DeSota and uh, LaSalle. But now, uh, Maxine Lewis of Colorado Springs wants to know how you children would refer to a geographical place if it were known by the full name of the explorer who discovered it. For example, uh, Lake Champlain would be Lake what? Then you'll be Champlain. That's right. That's the idea. Now then, try this one. How would you refer to Pike Peak? Paul? Zebulon Montgomery Pike Peak. That's right, Paul. Good boy. That was his name, all right. You know, all of us could immediately name our grandfathers, but most uh, most of us would have to think a bit to name a great, great uh, grandfather. Well, that's what Emma Lou Hendricks of Indianapolis, Indiana, wants us to do, not about your own family, but biblical families. Now, if you were King Asa, who would your great, great grandfather be on your father's, father's, father's side? Now, there's one to untangle. If you were King Asa, who would your great-great-grandfather be on your father's, father's, father's side? Joel? David. David is right, absolutely. That's right. I didn't think you kids were going to get that one. Now, Mrs. Mary Moore, who lives way back east in New York City, wonders how certain words are pronounced in Colorado. According to Westerners, what is the proper pronunciation of C-O-Y-O-T-E? Paul? Coyote. Coyote. That is riot. Uh, or, I mean, riot. Right. Yeah. Uh, here's the next one. C-H-A-T-S. 
Naomi? Chat. What did you say, honey? Chat. You say chat. Uh, Paul? Chat. Chat. That's right. That's correct. So many people do refer to them as uh, chaps, but uh, of course they are pronounced uh, chaps. And the next one is R O D E O. Joel? Rodeo. Paul? Rodeo. Rodeo, that's right. Rodeo is correct. And of course, uh, you notice uh, I said Colorado instead of Colorado or Colorado. Because I was told here to say that, uh, say it that way, or not at all. <laughs> so it's Colorado with me. Yes, sir. With, uh, with the UNESCO meeting here, we are thinking today about children in other parts of the world. The Reverend W. Uh, Werning of Lockwood, Missouri, Missouri, says that some of our favorite characters in children's literature aren't Americans at all but are from other countries. Now, if you could meet these characters, how would you greet them in their native tongue? Pinocchio is the first one. How would you greet Pinocchio? Joe? Well, I don't know how to greet him, but he's Italian. Yeah, he's Italian, so uh, how, how about it, Naomi? Well, I don't know how to greet him, but I can say goodbye to him. <laughs> All right, I'll accept the goodbye. Adios. That's right. That's very good. You could say, uh, como esta? That was the greeting when you first met him. Uh-huh. And how about Jack of Jack and the Beanstalk? How would you greet him? Jack of Jack and the Beanstalk. Uh, Pat? Well, uh, wasn't he in England? Yes. Well, then you'd just say hello to him. That's what you say, yeah. You say, hello, Jack. How are you? Mm -hmm. How about Puss in Boots? How would you greet Puss in Boots? Paul? Isn't he an English character, too? No. No. Naomi? I'd say meow. <laughs> <laughs> well, in cat talk, I imagine he'd understand that, too, but we would like to find out what you really would say to him if, uh, Joe? Well, I think he's French. I don't know what's French for the Lord. That's right. Yeah, he was French. So, Naomi. Je suis enchantée de faire votre connaissance. Oh, dear, dear. Oui, oui, yes. <laughs> oh, my. That was, that was real cute. You know, this part of the country is new and modern now, but Harold L. Edwards of Saginaw, Michigan, wonders whether you can recall in song the pioneer days. How about it? Can you think of any songs about the old pioneer days in the West? Paul? I come from Louisiana with a banjo on my knee. Well, fine, Paul. It's all right. <laughs> well, sure, that was so real. I could just hear that old banjo just a plunking away there. Um, Pat? Well, there's a song called When It's Springtime in the Rockies. Well, of course, that's <laughs> not a real old song, is it? Uh, oh, your old song. Well. Yeah, well... Uh, how does that go, by the way? When it's springtime in the Rockies, I'll be coming back to you. I don't think no, I have the right No, I think you've got the... I think you've got the wrong... Uh, when it's roundup time and tell you, we, we're getting another skate in here now, Pat. That's when it's roundup time and Yes, I see. I sang that once in Texas, but I... <laughs> well, that's all right. Texas is a grand state, too. Go. On Pine News, there were uh, cowboys and everything... So I know cow hand from the Rio Grande, and I learned to ride before I learned to stand. Never. Oh, I don't know the rest. Of it. That's all right, Joel. That's that's fine. Mark, well, what the, what song you got? I don't know the name of the but the words. Did you ever hear tell of sweet Betsy from Pike, who crossed the white prairie with a husband, Ike? <laughs> Sweet Betsy from Pike. That's a dandy. Paul? I'm not sure whether this is Pioneer, but... Oh, my poor Nellie Gray, they have taken you away. <laughs> well, 
Well, I'm, I'm not so sure myself, Paul, but we'll accept it. Yes, sir. We'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Joel? Well, in those days, there was mining in the sea there, so all in a cavern, in a canyon, excavating for a mine. There's a miner and his daughter, just so sorry, Clementine. Well, now, boy, Joel, and uh, and uh, now uh, the quiz kids catch their breath and we hear again from Star Yellow. You know, every minute of every day, somebody walks into a drugstore somewhere in the USA and says... A package of Alka-Seltzer, please. Well, next time, say instead... Two packages of Alka-Seltzer, please. Buy the extra package so you have Alka-Seltzer with you at home or away. Alka-Seltzer offers you extra benefits. Extra fast relief because it's all dissolved and ready to go to work the instant you drink it. Thus, its comfort reaches the trouble zone faster than some similar pain relievers taken in tablet form. Alka-Seltzer is extra effective because it contains a dependable analgesic to relieve pain, plus an effective alkalizer to help the discomfort of an over-acid upset stomach. Alka-Seltzer is extra pleasant because it makes a sparkling effervescent solution refreshing to the taste. Alka-Seltzer offers you extra value because it is one product that's good for so many common ailments. Get an extra package of Alka-Seltzer the next time you're in the drugstore. It comes in two sizes, 30 and 60 cents. Keep one package at home and the other at work. Or tuck it in your car or your suitcase when you travel this summer. Whenever you need its comfort, have Alka-Seltzer handy. That extra package is just like a spare. When one of them's empty, the other's right there. You know, uh, folks, since we're here in the interest of helping France, We've invited the national chairman of American Aid to France to help us with this question. And here she is, Madame Gavet. Uh, Madame Gavet will give you children some clues on the identity of three French women. See whether you can identify them. All right, Madame. Diamond necklace, cake... Tuileries. Naomi? Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette, that's right. And let's have the next one, madame. Fit blend, radioactivity, 1898. Paul? Madame Curie? That's right, Madame Curie. And uh, here is the next one. Now, the clue to this French lady is a quotation. I shall read it in French. Nous avons bien reçu votre colis de layette pour Jean-Pierre. Merci de tout cœur. Cela lui est tellement utile. Naomi? Well, uh, you said something about layette and Jean-Pierre, and that sounds like a letter that was sent to my mother from my cousins in France. That's right, honey. That's right. Uh huh. With a cute little cousin in France, Naomi has been very interested in this project. And uh, thank you, Madame Duvet, for helping us. And, of course, uh, you win one of those Zenith uh, portable radios for your question, you know. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. And would you mind sending that uh, radio to the Denver School Children's Youth Center in Brest, France? Well, that's exactly what we'll do. Thank you very much, Madame. Uh, incidentally, uh, Naomi, what uh, could you translate uh, what we just heard in Well, uh, it was something, uh, I think it uh, was uh, the package you, uh, the layette you sent uh, for little Jean-Pierre uh, was, was very useful. I know it said useful. Yeah. And uh, thank you very much. And That's very fine, Naomi. That's very fine. Huh? <laughs> All right, now... Uh, this question uh, is from Mrs. Estelle P. Slaughter of Greenville, South Carolina. It's an easy one, something you all know about. Cooking utensils. What cooking utensil would you find on a baseball diamond? Paul. A plate. A plate. You certainly would. And uh, that's the idea. Joel? A platter. A what? Well, they call it on the platter. Also, platter. The platter. You mean the base? Is that... Yes. Yeah, huh? Yeah, the start of the whole field. Oh, I see. Well, uh, that's uh, all right. Uh, Naomi? Well, uh, this isn't a cooking utensil, but the batter. Well, that's, that's one I hadn't thought of. Now, how do you like that? 
first that you have to put that in the cooking utensil and they owe me again. Pitcher. Pitcher. That's a good one. That's a dandy. Now, what cooking utensil would you find on a football field? Paul. A grid. Well, uh, what kind of a grid? Gridiron. A gridiron. That's right. What else would you find on a football field? Uh, Mark? Well... This isn't a cooking utensil, but you would find a steak. You'd find a steak? Yes. Yes, you would. So you would, yeah. Here's one I hadn't thought of. Uh, Paul? A scoreboard. You get the board from breadboard. Breadboard. Now, how do you like that? Well, that's fine. What cooking utensil would you find on a golf course? Naomi? Well, this isn't exactly a cooking utensil, but you'd find a tea. A tea? Well, that's all right. That suits me to a tea. <laughs> and, uh, Joel? Well, maybe if you were having, uh, poultry, uh, for breakfast, a birdie. Having poultry for breakfast, a birdie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, seems like we're getting a lot of food here instead of cooking utensils, but that's all right. Uh, Joel? An iron. An iron? Yeah, that's all right. And uh, there's something else that plays a very important part in uh, the game of golf that uh, you find on the kitchen table. That's just at the table. And it's uh, got a little hand on it. And what, uh, what, what would that be? What is that in the game of golf? You know, you almost get a hold of one and uh, uh, the ball. But, uh, Joel? Club? Ah, uh, no, no. <laughs> Naomi. Well, it isn't a cooking utensil, but maybe if you had a green tablecloth on your table. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking about uh, uh, the cup. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew you'd think about that, too, after I told you about it. Now then, uh, you uh, two quiz kids with birthdays today, uh, Naomi and Joel, and you, Pat, who had a birthday the day we arrived here, I told you earlier I had an idea, and here it is. Right after the broadcast, we'll all go back to the Cosmopolitan Hotel and have a real old-fashioned birthday party with cake and everything. With you included, Paul Hannon. And right now, I'm going to ask this whole crowd to sing happy birthday to you. How would you like that? All of these people wishing you a happy birthday. Tell you, folks, when we get to that part where the name comes, you know, uh, happy birthday, dear so-and-so. Well, we'll just have to put in all three names and do it in this order. Naomi, Pat, and Joel. Like this, you know. Happy birthday, dear Naomi, Pat, and Joel. <laughs> All right, here we go, right from the beginning now. Happy birthday to you. the bell. And again, I want to thank you, Paul Hannon, for being our guest quiz kid today, and also the entire city of Denver for its wonderful hospitality. You know, it's nice to know that the city of Denver hasn't forgotten that during the war, the underground in Brest, France, rescued 19 of Denver's flyers shot down behind German lines. Now that the city of Brest is prostrated, its former population of 175,000 reduced to 72,000, with almost every house partially or entirely ruined, with the infant mortality rate astronomically high because of the scarcity of heat, milk, and medical science, or medical service, rather, it's so nice to know that Denver school children remember and are helping their friends in breast. And beyond the relief of suffering, it's easy to see significance in this step toward international understanding and people-to-people -people friendliness. This is Joe Kelly dismissing the quiz kids until the same time next week when we'll be back in our classroom in Chicago. Goodbye, kids. <laughs>